ever-increasing flow of sea and air traffic over the broad reaches of the Pacific Ocean has made it necessary to expand existing Loran coverage in this part of the world. One of the places where this problem is very pronounced is the Philippine area. To relieve the situation, a series of new Loran stations have been proposed and the project has reached the staff planning stage. A conference is held at Coast Guard Headquarters, Washington, D.C. Heads of offices and divisions analyze reports, scan blueprints, consider all aspects of the project. As the conference proceeds, a firm plan of action emerges. Coordinating supply and construction with engineering and functional phases of the operation. On adjournment, a message goes to the next lower echelon of command. In this instance, the Commander 14th, Coast Guard District, Honolulu. Upon receipt of the message at 14th District Headquarters, Officers of the Civil Engineering Section are assigned to work out details for selection of sites, procurement, and transport of materials. Aerial surveys soon locate the best sites. A survey of each site sizes up the problems to be solved. By the time sites have been selected, plans for the operation have been completed. Equipment and supplies assembled for loading aboard the Coast Guard supply ship, Kakui, an old hand at this kind of job. Quantity is exceeded only by a variety of materials. Whether it's antenna poles or bags of cement, each item receives careful handling. Where the Kikui is going, you can't get anything but a sunburn. Every last bundle of lumber every last load of oil drums, every last piece of small package freight must arrive in good condition or long delays in construction will result. These big electronic equipment trailers are loaded aboard with particular care. In them is the heart of the operation. An intricate maze of Loran transmitting, timing and receiving equipment. One false move and it would be just too bad. So they are handled like crates of eggs. As the last trailer is lowered into the hold, food supplies start coming aboard. Plenty of meat, vegetables and fruit to satisfy hearty appetites in the weeks ahead. Now with loading complete, well-wishers and friends line the dock as the gangway is brought aboard.
alluring lines are cast off and taken in, and the Kukui gets underway. With signal flags flying smartly, the well-laden ship moves down the harbor, past familiar landmarks that won't be seen again for many months. Before she heads this way again, thousands of miles of blue Pacific water will have passed under her keel, and much hard work will have launched a new chain of Loran stations. The station our cameras will follow is one of four whose construction materials we saw loaded aboard the Kukui. It is located on Bataan, in the northernmost group of the Philippine Islands. One morning, we anchor off Bataan. Not a very imposing sight, but a welcome one after many long days at sea. First order of business is a talk with local officials. Details of the operation are discussed and arrangements made for obtaining local labor. Next comes an inspection of roads. They aren't too good, and much work must be done before they can carry the heavy loads from the landing site to the construction area. While considering this problem, a refreshing drink in the tropic heat is welcome. To determine the extent of required improvements, a foot-by-foot -foot survey is made. It discloses that in places the roads must be repaired and widened, bridges strengthened. Sharp turns straightened, steep grades cut down. This work too will be done by local labor under supervision of Coast Guard engineers. Meanwhile, the Kukui stands by. Finally, the word to offload cargo is given. First off are the unwieldy antenna poles. They're 90 feet long and full of fight. Getting them in tow and through the reefs to shore is going to be a job. Next off are the vehicles. They have a rough road ahead. Now with offloading well underway, cargo flows onto the landing site in a steady and varied stream. Here comes one of the vehicles. Getting them ashore is only the beginning. Days of hard work will follow before they're where they belong. But with equipment like this, the job will get done. Let's leave the landing site for a while and have a look at the station site. Here, the first order of business is setting up housekeeping. Tents like this will serve as living quarters until something more substantial can be erected. Brush hooks and axes team up with bulldozers to clear the area. transportation, modern and primitive, combined to battle the elements. 
and the terrain which has been reduced to muck by the tropic rains. You need all the hands and tools you can get on a job like this. Early and careful planning now pays off as cargo pours onto the landing site in a mounting flood and is moved through the village to the staging area. Here it is checked off and stored to be quickly reached when needed. What a variety of material. Who would think you'd need all that to build a Loran station? Crates and bales, bags and boxes, everything from bolts to lamp bulbs, chains to chairs, tacks to typewriters, wire to silverware, enough to stock a department store. A list of this stuff would read like a mail order catalog. Then too, enough fuel to operate the station for a year. Aboard the Kukui, offloading operations continue. Here comes a big trailer, and the order is, take it easy. to work up out of the holes, over the side and into the landing craft. It's an operation that requires the utmost in stevedoring skill, boat handling technique, and a calm sea. Assembling and wiring of the various components of each unit, an intricate and time-consuming job was accomplished before shipment to the last adjustment, the last holding down bolt. Such pre-packaging of Loran equipment, complete and ready to go, greatly expedites getting the station on the air. Easy now. That does it. But there's a tough haul ahead. When the trailers reach the station site, they can rest a while. Over the highways of the United States, from the east to the west coast they came then over thousands of miles of ocean. Now it's just a few more miles to journey's end. First hazard is the trip to the beach. It isn't far, but it's full of reefs and had to be carefully sounded before the landing craft could undertake transport of their precious cargo. Then comes the ticklish job of getting the trailers ashore. And this is where selection of a good site with a firm and gently sloping beach pays off.
The most powerful trucks available are used to traverse these last few rugged miles. Miles of steep, narrow roads carved from the mountainous terrain of the island. like this try to the limit the power, skill, and perseverance of man and machine. It's a nerve-wracking ordeal, and all hands heave a sigh of relief when that critical turn is rounded. There are still some bad spots ahead, but the worst is over. Time may not mean much to these villagers, but to the man who came out here to put up this Loran station, it means a lot. The quicker the job is done, the sooner the station will be on the air, and the sooner they'll get home. So even the trucks hauling the heavy trailers carry an extra load, boxes of miscellaneous material for the construction area. Finally, the convoy rolls off the main road, down a freshly graded slope to the construction site. This is journey's end, almost. Local labor is utilized wherever possible. These men are industrious, friendly, naturally acclimated, and eager to master the tools and techniques of this novel job. They work with enthusiasm and pride. Even low man in an antenna pole hole is a position of importance in this part of the world. These fellows are good mixers. Wheelbarrow chauffeur is a big man in the cement gang. He wouldn't swap for anything short of boss man. Boy, what a lot of cement it takes to fill one little hole. Meanwhile, work proceeds elsewhere. Anchor blocks are poured and set. Antenna poles will be guide to them. This will give the poles extra strength to resist the typhoons that sweep the area at certain seasons. Raising a 90-foot antenna pole is always a critical operation. Dangerous if not done properly. Tedious at best. expert guidance, the difficult task is accomplished. Primitive manpower, plus a modern tractor and heavy cables, wrap up a tough job in record time.
Foundations for station buildings are laid. These concrete slabs will afford a permanent firm base. Plumbing lines are run. Stubborn terrain yields to machine and shovel. Surveyors keep the job on the level. At last, the basic work is done. Things begin to take shape. Much to the interest of the sidewalk superintendents. This is the target the whole operation was aimed at. Orders called for earliest possible Loran service. Construction was planned accordingly and has been executed. For the trailers, the long trek across the United States, the long sea voyage, the last long miles over the tortuous Bataan roads, all are over. This is Journey's End. With the trailers in place and secured against tropic winds, final work is completed fast. Intertrailer electric cables are connected, thus integrating the major components into a complete unit. Final adjustments are made, everything readied for on-air operation. The Loran equipment gets a particularly careful check. Everything from generator to transmitter must be in perfect working order. This control board is the nerve center for the whole operation. Nothing will be right unless this is right. Close voltage regulation and frequency control are essential for proper Loran transmitter operation. Radio gear is also readied to assure rapid communication with other stations of the net and with the outside world. Designated radio frequency channels are set on transmitter equipment. Contact is made. The radio man prepares to send and receive. First message out advises that the station is ready to function. It's a big moment, an end, and a beginning. End of construction, beginning of operation. Meanwhile, the commanding officer of the station has set the Loran watch. Local and remote transmitted signals have been synchronized by exactly matching the two pulses. That is, superimposing one upon the other. It takes two Loran transmitting stations working together to provide the navigator with the electronic information necessary to locate his position. And so the technicians assigned to the first watch began the ceaseless vigil of keeping those two Loran signals matched, a vigil that is a faith, a faith that must not be broken. Another link has been forged in our great chain of Loran stations. And the raising of the flag confirms that it is on the air. Here, carved out of the ancient Philippine land, is another tribute to modern man's determination and ingenuity. On this outpost far from home, Coast Guard personnel who remain to man the station have been provided with all facilities for living in reasonable comfort. They have a duty to perform, a watch to keep, 
The signals going out from this newest link in the ever-expanding Loran system are precise aids to all who navigate on or over the sea. Ships and aircraft, military and commercial, in fair weather and foul. Now traverse millions of miles of trackless air and ocean, safe in the knowledge that the Coast Guard Loran system is on the air to guide them. 